Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I wanted to talk about something here real quick. How someone got evidence that I had, and if you haven't seen any of my other videos, um, I had a piece of paper from 1974. It was placed in a document sleeve along with my birth certificate, my medical records, my immunization book, and even some of my diplomas and stuff, and a couple certification things. All stuffed in this document sleeve that vanished sometime between 2001 and 2015. Here's the problem. No one knew the existence of this paper except for me and my mother. My mother hasn't become wealthy. And what this piece of paper from 1974 said was Jedi Knights in the Force. 1974, in case you can't count. That's three years before Star Wars came out. I had never told anyone about the document. I lived around the corner from George Lucas's cousin in 1974. So no one knew of the existence of this document. Okay. And it, I'm not making this up. This is not a story. It's not make believe. And I'm not an actor. And I've never been into trouble in my life, which I'll get into that here in a few minutes because I want to tell you what he tried to do to me. I had actually forgotten what had happened in 1974 until 1999, and I started to remember. It took me almost two years to remember everything, but actually I was already living in Ohio, and all this occurred in Louisville, Kentucky in 1974. Um, and I know because it was right after the tornado, and then we moved to West Palm Beach, Florida, um, I believe it's right at the beginning of May of 1974. But that time he already had it and took Jedi Knights in the Force and started putting it in his, in his manuscripts. And to further confirm that to you, if you've looked at any of his old original documents, he never knew the name of Jedi Knights in the Force um, until after Ma April, because April's when he got it from me. April. So that first document he had that said eyes only, uh, he it came out in May of 1974. Um, and he got it from me and I know the, I know the time because, um, the, the, tor the big tornado hit Kentucky in April, April the 3rd of 1974. There was one that hit Xenia, Ohio up, up here too. Um, well, I'm a little bit further. I'm like way Northern, but, um, uh, also, um, the April, um, week of Easter was April 14th um, and my parents got us great big Easter baskets and one of the things that was in and I think they were in my older brother's Easter basket because they had all these little weird Easter baskets way back you know they had pirate ones and so his was a pirate one and he had two swords in his and we were all out front playing pirates and I said Jack and Arts in the Force George Lucas's cousin Jack Hamburger was standing there and heard it and, went, and I guess he went back and told George. So every day he was at my house begging me to get on the phone. I got on the phone. That's how he got it in 1974. But not before he told me he was going to make me rich and famous. So he was uh, basically trying to lure a kid. And then, then he was trying to find out who knew about it. But that's not the point of this video, okay? So I just wanted you to understand where we're at right here. And if you want to know more, go back and watch my other videos. The point I wanted to make today was that no one knew the existence of this piece of paper and I wanted to t discuss uh, some of the laws of per pertaining to um, the fact that uh, he sent an FBI agent to my house in Bedford, Ohio in 2001 because I had started writing him because I started, this is when I started remembering. I told you I didn't remember until 1999 to 2001, about two year period there. It took me to remember all this. By the time I started remembering, I was writing to him, hey, remember me? Kind of like letters. And then he sent an FBI agent to my house named Bob Frederick. Bob Frederick, I'll be honest with you, I think they started tapping my phones and they were listening to me. Either that or they had someone with the CIA or whatever, whoever listens to phone calls, because I know they had that operation, uh, Project Echelon, I think, going at the time. And who knows what they've been doing. And the F everybody knows the FBI's been getting involved in, as deep into corruption. Let's just put it that way. 
and they're they're running an information laundering service and and uh, it's a protection racket for you know the wealthy especially when they you know you know something on them just like my case for instance i mean they they knew i had evidence on him but again they didn't know because i never told him in the letters and i never told anyone except my mother knew because me and her pulled out the document sleeve and this is part of what made me remember i told you remember night i didn't remember until 1999 well that was because she was telling the story when it first started in 1999 the, the process of me remembering when well, she was telling a story about me following this tinker toy which never happened i didn't fall on a tinker toy um jack hamburger george lucas's cousin almost killed me with a piece of rebar and she never understood what had actually happened and things just didn't look that way to her because she didn't see actually what happened um anyway uh, nobody knew the existence of it i didn't tell him I never even mentioned it in one of my videos here. I started making these videos in 2014. And the first time I mentioned that piece of paper was on a video. I went back down there in 2015 and it was gone. My whole document sleeve. All of my documents from my childhood. My medical records. My my uh, diploma. my uh, You know, and I think my birth certificate was in there. But I think we took it out. But at the same time, that's when we looked at that piece of paper and I go, what is this? She goes, your, your nephew Davey made that. I, I was like, okay. Well, I, at the time I didn't remember because I told you I was still remembering all this. And this was at the beginning of 2000. But later that year, I had told you I moved to Ohio and, and it was like a, a flood walls on a dam broke and I remembered like everything came back to me. I was like, that's my piece of paper. I remember drawing it in Florida. And there's a car on the bottom of the page. And see, my father had rebuilt this Cadillac and gave it to my mother, which it was like oh, like a brand new Cadillac. But it reminded us of the Batmobile from the original Batman and Robin series. It was on TV. We loved that show. Um, but the car was supposed to look like that, but I didn't do a very good job drawing it. But when we pulled that piece of paper out, it said, Jedi Knights in the Force. And guess when I made it? Again, the same year, 1974. Three years before Star Wars came out, because it was just a, a month or two later, we were living in Florida, West Palm Beach, when I remembered. And the reason I did remember is because when he almost killed me, the piece of rebar that went into my mouth, it pushed my whole palate back. I had a huge hole in the top of the roof of my mouth where it ripped my palate back. And they had to take hemostats, pull my... Pull my whole palette forward and glue it. And it was this glue that was like, it was like plastic. So the, the whole roof of my mouth was like a really slick sheet of plastic for months. And I went down to Florida and I kept feeling that and I remembered. And I went in the house and I put it on paper. And my brother says, nobody's going to steal that thing. Well, see, that's also partially what caused him to remember. But again, let's get back to the story hand. This is why... They could not have known about this piece of paper because I never told anyone. Only my two brothers and my mother knew. And like I said, none of them are rich. And there's how could they have known? I got on the phone with my brother after 2001 and asked him to go get that my document sleeve because he still didn't really remember, you know, and it's funny because my older brother actually had told me how to spell night, K-N-I-G-H-T. And, it, you know, it gets even better. But the thing is that that piece of paper, no one knew it existed except for me and my mother because me and my mother pulled it out, as I said, in 2000, at the beginning of 2000, because we were looking for paperwork, okay? Um, that piece of paper went right back into that sleeve and it went into a storage unit, not in a storage unit like you rent in the city. It went way out in someone's attic at first and then they had a, a storage shed that they had just built and all of our stuff went into that sto locked storage shed. It, way out in the country. So nobody could have just walked 
moseyed on in there like that, you know, like the like some of these ones in the city. Even then, you have to have a passcode to get in the ones here. But they couldn't have just walked in into it out way out in the country. And, and somebody, look, somebody had to know of the existence of that paper before they could go steal it. Obviously, right? So I mean, you you ask yourself this, you answer this for yourself. I, if they didn't know it existed, how would they be trying to look for it to steal it? So they had to have been tapping my phones illegally. And then further, to turn around and tell George Lucas, who I know doesn't have security clearance, is a violation of 18 U.S. Code Section 798, Disclosure of Classified Information. Okay, whosoever knowingly and willfully, and I'm going to read it to you, whoever knowingly and willingly, willfully, sorry, willfully, communicates, furnishes, transmits, or otherwise makes avail available to an unauthorized person, George Lucas in this case, or publishes or uses it any manner prejudicial to the safety or the interest of the United States or of for the benefit of any foreign government or to the detriment of the United States or any classified information concerning the nature, preparation of use or use of any code, cipher, cryptic system or United States or any foreign government concerning construction, use, maintenance, repair, device, apparatus, appliance, or there's all the, a bunch of gibberish. But any, basically, if you go on and read, it, it's saying that if you share this classified information, you're in violation of the law. Um, like I said, U.S. Code 18, Section 798. All right. Any information obtained in the process, processes of, of see, because this kind of intelligence is only supposed to be used for foreign Thing. So they, for them to be listening to me was already a violation anyway because I, I didn't have any dealings with any foreign people. The next section, we'll go on down and I'm skip a few because it says the term unauthorized person means any person who, who or agency which is not authorized to receive information of the category set forth in, in the subsection A of this section by the president or by the head of any department or agency of the United States which is expressly designated by the president to engage in communicate communication intelligence activities for the United States. Any converse any person convicted of a violation of this section shall forfeit to the United States irrespectively of any provision of state law, any property constituting or derived from any proceeds the person obtained directly or indirectly as a result of such violation. And I, I didn't uh, copy the rest of it, but I just wanted to get that first part uh, down. So um, he violated U.S. Code 18, Section 798. Someone did, working for George Lucas. And to be honest, and I'll go over this again, that I believe that some whoever that someone was was probably selling to the highest bidder. And I still, to this day, I think, because when did they get it? That piece of paper disappeared. And I again, I saw it in 2000. It went into storage out in the country. And I know they couldn't have found it right away. And I didn't even talk to to my brothers and stuff about it on the phone for at least a year or so after that. So there's no possible way they could have known it even it was there or it existed. Maybe even prior to 2003 or four. So somewhere after 2003, four to I know I went in, down in 15. So you got 11 year window. I know that's a big window, but. Um, it's ironic that right in the middle of that window, what do you have? You have the sale of Star Wars, the Star Wars franchise to Disney. 
and I still think now that it's around 2012 was when it vanished and he had somebody finally found it or got to it and got that sleeve out of there. And the day that they sold it to Disney or um, whatever, I don't know what deals they might have made and then Disney blackmailed George Lucas and, and to selling them Star Wars. You know, they said, well, look, we got the proof here that you stole this from a little kid, you know, seven-year-old kid in 1974. So you're going to sell it to us for, you know, five billion, just so it don't look like it, you know, it's, you know, sketchy, right? Because it wouldn't have looked sketchy if he just gave it to him. Something that wouldn't sit right with anybody. So obviously, um, anyway, I, w I just wanted to make that short uh, video and bring up the U.S. law, U.S. code, and uh, make people think, you know. I'm not making these things up. This happened, 1974. And to tell you one more thing, my younger brother remembers. He was the one who said, nobody's going to steal that stupid thing. Well, when we were on Riata Drive, when his cousin, Jack Hamburger, first heard me say Jedi Knight in the Force, my brother even was like, what is that? And the same brother, same brother. He said, what is that? I said, well, someone who uses the Force to fight evil. And he goes, maybe you're the evil one. So between him saying, maybe you're the evil one, and then when we were in Florida, when I went to put it on paper, him saying, nobody's going to steal that stupid thing. Those two things, I t when, he, when I told him what he said, he remembered. He remembers me saying it. And I've got a snapshot, screenshot of his conversation with me talking about it, and you can still talk to him today and ask him. My older brother remembers night. Of course he would, because that's what he told me how to spell in the house. Um, you can believe what you want to believe. I, I've been telling the truth for 20 years now, over 20 years, and nobody wants to hear it. I've written three presidents, newspapers, magazines, lawyers, and when he tried to have me, and this is what I was talking about earlier, um, he tried to have me arrested, that FBI agent, and he kept sending him to my house because I was writing letters to him. But as I told you, I wasn't being rude and I wasn't threatening him. And I was just like, hey, you know, when I first started writing, hey, remember me from, you know, Riata Boulevard? Your cousin lived on Robinwood Road, 5707 Robinwood, and I lived on 5513 Riata Boulevard. And it's like 400 and something feet apart because we were like right around the corner from each other, you know. Um, but what does he do? He tries to send him to, he, w he went to the Bedford Police Department and tried to take a menacing charge out of me. I've never been to jail in my life. I've never broke the law. I've never done anything wrong. I've never accused anyone falsely, okay? And just so you can get that through your head right now, I didn't write Star Wars. I brought Jedi Knights in the Force and he took them and used them in Star Wars, which was still vastly plagiarized from many people. And as I've said, there's a guy called the Star Killer who has a video on on, on YouTube um, called Did Lee Brackett Ghostwrite Star Wars? And when you watch it and you listen to everything that come out of Lee Brackett's and her husband Edmund Hamilton's books, all, like all the elements of Star Wars are in their books. How did... And she, he didn't give her credit. He gave her credit in Empire Strikes Back in the second movie. She just got a, barely got a credit in that movie. And so everybody knows that all the stuff that was in the first movie, too, came out of her books. So she wrote at least the first three episodes of Star Wars, and they didn't even give her credit except in Empire Strikes Back. So he's been stealing and plagiarizing things for y'all don't know how long. Lucasfilm itself, corrupt. They're all corrupt. They use the FBI as an intelligence agency. They, they just like they've been saying, they've been arming the intelligence agency. They used it as an information la information laundering service. They stole my damn evidence. They, they, they know they did. And now you know they did, because I'm telling you the truth. Um, my, my, my stuff is still missing. I'd like to have my medical records back. I'd like to have my immunization book. I'd like to have my diploma back. I'd like to have my stuff back, you see? 
All my stuff's gone from my childhood. But my brothers both had a document sleeve too. Guess what? Theirs were still there. Only mine was missing. Theirs are still sitting there. Mine's gone. The evidence gone. My my records from my childhood gone. Why he, why else did they take everything? It's because my medical records may have shown the day his cousin almost killed me that I that I went to the hospital. What day? What time? And that was the same day he stole Jedi Knights in the Force. So he knows that that could tie his time that he called his cousin Jack Hamburger and got on the phone with me and got Jedi Knights in the Force. So he's he's been lying for 49 years now. It just passed the 49 year mark. He's gonna hit 50 years here next year. You know, 50 years he's been lying to you all and y'all think Star Wars, Star Wars, you worship it. You worship Jedi, you worship, and you don't even know who or what Jedi is. And you don't. He didn't take it from his own imagination. He took it from someone else. He doesn't know what it is. He stole things. Uh, Yoda's even out of the Vintage Manuscript, but I'm gonna end this video right now, but I just wanted to make the point that they broke the law. They broke 18 U.S. Code, Section 798, and that is the end of it. They took something, he sold it to people. He didn't have any right. Um, and then they, if they heard you talking about the ingredients on a pack of gum, and they went and told that to somebody else, they would still be in violation because they were listening to you on behalf of the U.S. government or supposed to be. And that they're not supposed to share that with anyone who's unauthorized. So just remember that they broke the law. They got my evidence. Nobody knew where it, exist, it even existed or where it was. So they had to have been listening to me and figured out where it was from me talking to my brothers on the phone. That's the only way because no one in my family's gotten rich unless they were really stupid and sold it for a bag of beans. And I don't see anybody growing a beanstalk. You know what I'm saying? Have a good evening.